Hello everyone, this side Dr. Abhijit and today we are going to discuss oogenesis, stages in the development of the follicle, structure of the secondary oocyte and the events which is leading to fertilization and I will be talking about the clinical correlation that is regarding the female infertility, female infertility. So let's start with oogenesis. Now, oogenesis basically it starts in the intrauterine life. Okay, it starts in the intrauterine life. So it starts in the intrauterine life, or it begins in the intrauterine life. So you already know the sex cell. Okay. That is the oogonium, oogonia or oogonium, oogonia and oogonium. It is basically arising from the epiblast, right? The primitive sex cells, right? So the oogonia or the oogonium, it is nothing but the female germ cells, right? It is the female germ cells. And we all know that what will be the number of chromosomes in the female uh, germ cell? It is 46 XX. It is 46 XX. Right. I can write it as 44 plus XX. Or I can simply write 46 XX. Right. So remember, now what will happen to this ugonia? It will undergo mitosis. Now this ugonia will undergo mitosis. And you already know mitosis it, it is an equational division. So the number of chromosomes will remain the same. So this ugonia will form the primary oocyte. Right. It will form the primary oocyte. Now this primary oocyte will be having the chromosome number means oogonia jo hai wo kha pi kar aur bada ho jayega it will convert into primary oocyte and yes it will have again the chromosome number which will be 46 x x right so remember this is i'm talking about the intrauterine life okay when the female it is in the womb of the pregnant woman right so that is uh, where i'm like talking about this so now what will happen to this primary oocyte again it will undergo meiosis 1 there will be reductional division which will be started meiosis 1 will be started but it will not get complete it will be arrested it will be arrested in the diplotene stage it will get arrested in the diplotene stage of prophase 1. Very, very important. Prophase 1. We have two types of meiosis, meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. Meiosis 1 will have four stages, prophase, metaphase, anaphase and telophase. Similarly, meiosis 2 will also have these four stages. Prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. Now, it is the prophase 1 where this primary oocyte will get arrested and it is the diplotene stage of prophase 1. Very, very important. It is the diplotene stage of prophase 1. And remember, prophase 1 has 5 stages. I hope you all remember it. Otherwise, you can remember uh, by a simple mnemonic that is Lehrati Zulfo Par Dil Divana. So we have Lehrati Zulfo Par Dil Divana. Now how can you remember this, all the stages of prophase 1? L stands for leptotene. Leptotene. Z stands for zygotene. P stands for pecaitene. D stands for Diplotene 
and another D stands for diakinesis. So you can see these are the stages of prophase 1, right? These are the stages of prophase 1. Now the meiotic division has started, the meiosis 1 has started. It will be continued up till, it will be continued up till diplotene and over here it will get stop, right? Over here after this it will get stop, right? So meiosis 1 will be started but yes it will be arrested in the diplotene stage of prophase 1. Now this arrested state, this arrested state or arrested stage, right? It is called as, it is given a special name that is called as the dictate stage. Dictate state or dictate stage, right? Now, there is a question that which stage is absent in spermatogenesis? Dictate stage, right? Now, dictate stage, it is not seen in spermatogenesis because there is nothing called as arrest which is happening in spermatogenesis uh, as like oogenesis. So, there is one question that which state is absent in spermatogenesis? It is the dictate stage. It is the dictate stage, right? So that was about what is happening in the intrauterine life, right? In the intrauterine life, now in the intrauterine life, what will happen? This primary oocyte, this primary oocyte will get surrounded by it will get surrounded by follicular cells of the ovary. It will get surrounded by the follicular cells of the ovary. Now, let us, let us assume that suppose this is the primary oocyte. This is the primary oocyte which is containing 46 chromosomes, right? And this primary oocyte gets surrounded by, okay, it is surrounded by the follicular cells of the ovary and this structure it is called as the primordial follicle. This structure it is called as the primordial follicle. Now these are the <coughs> follicular cells of the ovary, follicular cells of ovary and together the primary oocyte along with the follicular cells of the ovary, this is called as the primordial follicle. Primordial follicle. Now, when a newborn is born, right? When a newborn is born, the ovary has many primordial follicles. So, remember? Yes. When a newborn is born, right? The ovary has many primordial follicles. The ovary has many primordial follicles, right? During menopause, right, menopause is absence of menstruation, the ovarian follicles, like there will be no follicles in the ovary. So, you already know that during menopause, when there is absence of menstruation, 
there will be no follicles in the ovary there will be no follicles in the ovary so yes test for ovarian reserve is done to see whether follicles are present in the ovary or not like to test for infertility these uh, follicles are uh, like the test for these uh, reserves uh, are done right so remember the test for ovarian reserve it is done to see whether the follicles are present in the ovary or not to see whether follicles are present in the ovary or not so yes more number of follicles like yes the female is fertile otherwise if there is decreased number of follicles the female it is like prone to infertility now this was about till the intrauterine life right what is happening in the intrauterine life the oogonia is converting into primary oocyte the primary oocyte is getting arrested at the diplotene stage of prophase and these primary oocytes are getting surrounded by the uh, follicular cells and together this structure is called as the primordial follicle now let us see what happens at puberty now at puberty at puberty what will happen the hypothalamus pituitary ovarian axis gets mature right the hpo means hypothalamus pituitary ovarian axis it gets mature right it gets mature now this hypothalamus pituitary ovarian axis will release now it will release gnrh in a pulsatile manner right it will release gnrh gonadotropin releasing hormone it will release gonadotropin releasing hormone and that too in a pulsatile manner continuous manner meaning hai, pulsatile manner right it is pulsatile manner now this gnrh or gonadotropin releasing hormone will act on will act on anterior pituitary now suppose this is the anterior pituitary will act on anterior pituitary the pituitary gland okay we have the anterior pituitary and the posterior one right so anterior pituitary will release two hormones and that you already know that is the lh and fsh right we have the luteinizing hormone and the follicle stimulating hormone so lh stands for luteinizing hormone and fsh stands for follicle stimulating hormone right now what this follicle stimulating hormone will do it will stimulate all the follicles right it will stimulate the follicular cells of the ovary it will stimulate the follicles or the follicular cells of the ovary and these follicles will start developing these follicles will start developing right later on what will happen all the follicles will undergo atresia or apoptosis later on all the follicles will undergo apoptosis or atresia and only one follicle will be left 
okay and that is called as the dominant follicle right and only one follicle will be left and that is called as the dominant follicle dominant follicle right now this dominant follicle right it is only left because the rest will undergo apoptosis they will die and the one which will be survived or that is called as the dominant one the dominating nature right now what LH will do now this LH what will it do it will resume the meiosis one okay there will be sudden increase in the level of luteinizing hormone and that will lead to the resumption of meiosis one meiosis one will be resumed it will be resumed and remember that over here the meiosis one it is hormone dependent it is hormone dependent right the meiosis one it is hormone dependent so let us let us just continue so what will happen there will be sudden increase there will be sudden increase in the levels of LH hormone LH hormone and this luteinizing hormone right this luteinizing hormone right what it will do yes sudden increase in the levels of LH hormone it is called as the LH surge and what it will do it will be responsible for responsible for resumption of meiosis 1 resumption of meiosis 1 right now you already know from where we left now suppose this is the primary oocyte right this is the primary oocyte and this primary oocyte it is containing 46 chromosomes from here we like left you can all see over here right it was surrounded by the follicular cells and this is the primary oocyte now what will happen to the primary oocyte this primary oocyte will now the meiosis one will get completed okay the meiosis one will complete and it is uh, at puberty and at puberty it is due to the LH surge LH surge sudden increase in the levels of LH hormone right the luteinizing hormone now this meiosis one will complete and what it will form it will form secondary oocyte it will form secondary oocyte and along with the secondary oocyte there will be formation of the first polar body now this polar body is just meant for the you know the division of uh, cytoplasm right so the minimum cytoplasm and the haploid number of chromosomes so it uh, has to like take the uh, cytoplasm and the haploid number of chromosomes right now this polar body it is actually to get rid of extra number of chromosomes To get rid of the extra number of chromosomes now this secondary oocyte okay what will be the ploidy level right now over here it will be 23 x and over here it will be also 23 x right so secondary oocyte will contain 23 x right in brackets you can write it is 22 plus x or 23 x right so remember beta release of secondary oocyte from primary oocyte it is called ovulation so this is important now you can just write it over here that release of 
secondary oocyte from primary oocyte it is called as ovulation it is called as ovulation now this lh surge lh surge basically occurs like 36 hours prior to ovulation okay it occurs 36 hours prior to ovulation this is again you have to remember the lh surge okay it is occurring 36 hours prior to ovulation now what will happen to the secondary oocyte this secondary oocyte will undergo meiosis 2 it will undergo meiosis 2 it will undergo meiosis 2 and remember this meiosis 2 will again be arrested arrested in the metaphase it will again be arrested in the metaphase 2 of meiosis 2 now there are two arrests that I have like talked about in this entire oogenesis. One was in the starting in the diplotene stage of the prophase 1 and over here the meiosis 2 has started. You already know the stages of meiosis 2, prophase, metaphase, anaphase and telophase. Now prophase was done but at the time of the metaphase it got arrested. Now this arrest will only be completed at the time of fertilization, right? So yes, meiosis 2. Remember, the meiosis 2 completes only if fertilization takes place. Okay, only if fertilization takes place and remember that if it is completed, if it is completed, let us suppose that meiosis fertilization take place. Fertilization takes place. So, what will happen? Yes, meiosis 2 will be completed and it will lead to the formation of ovum or the female pronucleus along with the second polar body. It will lead to the formation of ovum. This is the ovum and we have the female pronucleus, right? We have the, let me write it. Yes, this is the ovum or female pronucleus. And this is the, yes, this is the second polar body. This is the second polar body. Again, remember the number of chromosomes will remain the same because meiosis 2, you already know, it is, a, it is just like mitosis, equational division. So, yes, the number of chromosomes will remain the same. It will be, yes, it will be. 23x in the ovum or female nucleus and 23x in the second polar body, right? So that is about the entire oogenesis. That is about the entire oogenesis. Now I have two, three different questions. If I ask you, the first polar body, it is released at time of ovulation, right? First polar body, if you can see over here, this is the first polar body. And this first polar body, it is released at time of ovulation. But if I ask you, the second polar body, it is released at time of fertilization. Okay, then only meiosis 2 will get completed. So, two different questions. When is the first polar body released? It is at the time of ovulation. And when is the second polar body released? It is at the time of, yes, fertilization. Right? So, let's try to answer all these questions. Now, yes, the first polar body, the first polar body, it is released at the time of ovulation or ovulation kya hota hai? Release of 
primary oocyte okay release of secondary oocyte from the primary oocyte primary oocyte say secondary oocyte ka banna it is called as ovulation and at the time of ovulation what is releasing the first polar body the second polar body it is released at the time of fertilization the size of the ova you have to remember it is 120 microns the largest cell in the human body 120 microns the fertilizable span of the ova okay or the secondary oocyte it is around 12 to 24 hours right the fertilizable span of the ova or secondary oocyte it is 12 to 24 hours and you already know the time uh, between the lh surge and ovulation i have already discussed it is like 36 hours prior or in books it is like written like this it is 32 to 36 hours right or if it is not given in the option you can write 24 to 36 hours right before ovulation hours before ovulation right so 32 to 36 hours it is the best answer right it is the best answer now okay the maximum number of follicles not tell me the maximum number of follicles it is seen at fifth month of intrauterine life right it is seen at fifth month of intrauterine life or i can simply say 20 weeks of intrauterine life 20 weeks of intrauterine life right so how many follicles are seen at 5 month or 20 weeks of intrauterine life it is around 6 to 7 million follicles it is around 6 to 7 million follicles remember at the time of birth at time of birth it is approximately around 1 to 2 million follicles 1 to 2 million follicles and at the time of puberty at the time of puberty it is 4 to 5 lakhs follicles they all are undergoing atresia right so yes we have 4 to 5 lakhs uh, lakhs follicles and remember out of this 4 to 5 lakh follicles these are like out of which 500 follicles will mature in the entire life of the female okay it will mature in the entire life of the female out of which 500 follicles will mature in the entire life of the female right you have to remember that thousands of follicles thousand follicles they undergo atresia every month so yes only the 500 follicles they will mature in the entire lifetime of the female right otherwise all will go under go atresia now coming on to the next topic that is the stages in the development of the follicle the stages in the development of the follicle now let us see over here we will draw and we will write together right now the first step beta the first step we have the primordial follicle primordial follicle now when i say primordial follicle you already know the primary oocyte will get surrounded by the follicular cells of the ovary right so this is i have already discussed so remember we have the primary oocyte the primary oocyte gets surrounded by flat single okay they these are flat single layer of follicular cells right single layer of follicular cells of the ovary okay 
So now, if I just want to draw this, if if I just want to draw this, you already know. Let us let us just draw this also. Now let us suppose this is the primordial follicle. I mean, this is the primary uh, oocyte, right? This is the primary oocyte, and this primary oocyte it is surrounded by the flat cells. Now let us try to draw these flat cells with green color. The flat cells, yes, you have to draw the line diagrams, nothing fancy has to be drawn. So yes, these are the flat cells of the ovary, right? So remember that these are the flat cells and these are like in a single layer. Right, these are in the single layer. These flat cells, beta. Remember, these are squamous epithelial cells. These are. This is nothing but the squamous epithelial cells. Epithelial cells. Right. These are the squamous epithelial cells, or I can also say this as the stromal cells. The stromal cells or the connective tissue cells, right? Connective tissue cells. Just have to remember that these are the flat cells, the squamous epithelial cells which are surrounding the uh, primary oocyte, right? So this structure, this structure together, it is called as the primordial follicle. Let me just mark this. So this structure together, it is called as the primordial follicle. Now, after the nutrition, this primordial follicle will convert into primary follicle, right? This was the primordial follicle. Now, after the nutrition, this will convert into, yes, this will convert into primary follicle. This will convert into primary follicle. Now, let us let us just first understand what is the there in the primary follicle and then we will draw the corresponding diagram. So you already know the primary oocyte, the primary oocyte will be now surrounded by, okay, the primary oocyte will be surrounded by single layer of cuboidal follicular cells, okay single layer of cuboidal follicular cells single layer of cuboidal follicular cells and remember that these cuboidal follicular cells they are called as the granulosa cells okay these are called as the granulosa cells of the ovary right so yes this is the structure of the primordial of the primary follicle. Let us let us just draw this. Let us just draw this. It will like remain the same only. We just have to mention that now these primary oocyte. Now let us suppose this is the primary oocyte. Now this primary oocyte is getting surrounded by a single layer of cuboidal follicular cells. Now these cells uh, after nutrition have changed their shape. Now these are called as the cuboidal follicular cells. So yes, these are the cuboidal follicular cells which are present in a single layer and it is surrounding the ovary. Right? These are the cuboidal follicular cells. And remember, these cuboidal follicular cells are called as the granulosa cells. Granulosa cells, right? Granulosa cells. And yeah, this structure, this structure together it is called as the primary follicle. Primary follicle.
so primordial follicle will give rise to primary follicle now this primary follicle will give rise to secondary follicle okay it will now give rise to secondary follicle let us write then from the primary follicle what will be formed secondary follicle secondary follicle will be formed secondary follicle will be formed now what is secondary follicle now the primary follicle gets converted to secondary follicle this secondary follicle it is also called as the pre antral follicle pre antral follicle now this primary oocyte or let me just use another pen another ink right this primary oocyte it will get surrounded by right it will get surrounded by zona pellucida it is a glycoprotein structure it will get surrounded by zona pellucida right plus plus you will see multiple layers of granulosa cells earlier in the primary follicle only single layer was present now over here what you will see you will encounter multiple layers of granulosa cells multiple layers of granulosa cells plus in return to this you will also see few theca cells there will be theca cells to, uh, which is present in the ovary so you will see this structure uh, like this right now remember there is no cavity as such over here there is no cavity as such over here in the secondary follicle so remember there is no cavity over here right so yes we have no cavity over here now let us just try to draw this structure let us just try to draw this right now let us suppose that this is the primary oocyte this is the primary oocyte now this primary oocyte it is getting surrounded by the zona pellucida so let me just draw the zona pellucida with this highlighter now this primary oocyte it is getting surrounded by this zona pellucida and you will see there was earlier only one layer of granulosa cells now you will have multiple layers of granulosa cells so let us just try to draw this the multiple layers of granulosa cells which is surrounding this primary oocyte So you can draw two three layers over here so yes remember in the secondary follicle there is no uh, cavity which you will see over here so yes these are the granulosa cells of the ovary and in return like you will also see okay you will also see the theca layer okay you will also see the theca layer you will see the few theca cells i'm just drawing like it in the form of a line because they are few in number and only us are like they are present around this granulosa cells so yes these are the theca cells right or i can simply say the theca layer right these are the follicular cells only the follicular cells only which has no converted into a layer that is the theca layer right this is the theca layer right now what will happen this secondary uh, follicle will now convert into tertiary follicle this secondary follicle will now convert into tertiary follicle also called as the antral follicle right it will now convert into the tertiary follicle tertiary follicle or also called as the antral follicle okay, it is also called as the antral follicle now again what will happen the primary oocyte okay there will be uh, okay now in the tertiary follicle right in the tertiary follicle what you can see over here that uh, the granulosa cells will uh, release its secretion release its secretion 
then there will be formation of a cavity over here right there will be formation of a cavity over here and that cavity is just called as the antrum cavity okay it is a fluid uh, which is secreted by the granulosa cells so what will happen you will see a cavity let me let me just draw it so to make you understand yeah i don't have yeah let us suppose this is the cavity and this is this cavity it is called as the antral cavity antral cavity now due to this cavity what will happen this uh, like uh, now in the tertiary follicle the primary oocyte will be changed into secondary oocyte it will be changed into secondary oocyte right we will have secondary oocyte now around the secondary oocyte you already know we have a layer of zona pellucida we have a layer of zona pellucida around the secondary oocyte this i have already told you the structure will remain the same this is zona pellucida and yes we have this antral cavity and again this theca layer will be divided into two layers these theca cells will be divided into an inner layer and it will divide it into an outer layer which is called as theca interna and externa respectively so we have theca interna and we have theca externa right theca externa and yes we have these uh, granulosa cells which are like surrounding and these granulosa cells has no secreted their secretions and there is formation of a cavity that is called as the antral cavity which is filled with secretions which is filled with secretions and this antral cavity okay let us let us just write about this also you already know this antral cavity it is a fluid it is formed because of the fluid secreted by granulosa cells it is a fluid secreted by granulosa cells right so it is also known as the liquid folliculi it is also known as the liquid folliculi right so yeah the granulosa cells are secreting okay and that is like an antral cavity is formed which is also called as the liquid folliculi right and you already know zona zona pellucida it is a glycoprotein layer i have not mentioned just write it it is a glycoprotein layer it is a glycoprotein layer now what will happen after the tertiary follicle after the tertiary follicle the mature graafian follicle will be formed right after the tertiary follicle remember the mature graafian follicle will be formed mature graafian follicle will be formed now the antrum okay or the cavity will become larger in size right the antrum let us see what are the changes that will be there you can see the antrum we have drawn the antrum with the violet color so let's let's keep the color coding same and now just try to see over here the antrum will become larger in size right this is the antral follicle or the antrum okay also called as the liquid folliculi liquid folliculi right now we have the secondary oocyte we have the secondary oocyte this secondary oocyte it is having the covering of zona pellucida right this is having the covering of zona pellucida now the graafian follicular cells right the graafian cells or sorry repeat now the granulosa cells which is surrounding the ovary okay the granulosa cells which is surrounding the ovary okay this is these are termed uh, they are given a special name okay 
which are surrounding the secondary oocyte they are called as cumulus oophoricus so these are called as cumulus oophoricus so these are nothing but the granulosa cells only granulosa cells only which are surrounding the secondary oocyte surrounding secondary oocyte right cumulus oophoricus and some of these granulosa cells will no will be connecting this yes with the theca layer and these are called as the germ cells or sorry the germ hill right so these are granulosa cells only the specialized granulosa cells which is you no know, connecting it to the uh, theca layer so yes let me let me just draw the theca layer as well so you can all see we have the theca interna right and outermost it is the theca externa right theca interna and theca externa theca interna and theca externa right theca interna theca externa so that is why uh, like this is the mature graphene follicle that you can see over here so these are the various stages in the development of the follicle that i have already discussed the primordial follicle will give rise to primary follicle the primary follicle will give rise to secondary follicle the secondary follicle will give rise to tertiary and later on the mature graphene follicle will be formed right